Howdy, folks. I'm Brian. I'm Amber, and happy Pride Month. <laughs> happy Pride Month. It's our rainbow suspenders. Brian's uh, green screen filtery thing is just making us in the green and yellow don't show up. Amber doesn't believe in green. I she love only, green. It's my favorite color. She believes in purple. <laughs> Let's get started. Our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for tricking my in-laws into trying my food? Normally, I would say yes, but there's more to the story. This isn't necessarily my proudest moment, but I'm tired of being the outcast. I'm a 32-year-old female, and my husband Pete, a 34-year-old male, comes from a family where all the women are bakers. I'm a baker myself, and I used to sell out of my house under my state's cottage laws, but stopped because I like it just being a hobby. His sister-in-law, Kay, 39, is one who is known for her cupcake and cake pops. When I met everyone years ago, it was the first thing that I learned. Everyone talked about everything she made. Even when Pete mentioned how good my stuff was, everyone would say that Kay sells hers and they're popular, so they must be better. Whenever I bring treats, they are often left untouched because they're not Kay's. Yes, I've been told that, they ask me to bring something to every get together and then never touch it. That's kind of rude. To be clear, Kay is mainly a baker, whereas I bake and specialize in professionally decorated cakes. Kay says that overly decorated cakes are compensating for their bad taste and Pete's family agrees. We had a barbecue on Monday for Memorial Day and everyone made their treats. Kay decided to bring cake pops. She posted them on her Instagram the night before. So, and I know this is immature, but I made the exact same ones that she did. Same flavor, same design. We got there and everyone asked where my treats were and I said they're in the car. I'll get them in a minute. So I waited for everyone to be outside and then I brought mine in and put them next to Kay's. After we eat, I notice the family is eating my cake pops and not Kay's. She didn't notice at first and then asked if they weren't feeling cake pops. They said that they just ate them and that they were the best that she's ever made and asked what she did different. Mother-in-law even said they looked so much better in person than in the picture. Kay was confused and said that hers were still on the table. That's when I said, oh, I brought those. Glad you enjoyed them. Her husband said that he hadn't had ones yet, lies, he ate two, and everyone else just said, yeah, they were okay. Kay didn't say anything for the rest of the night. Pete thought it was funny. He didn't know what I did until the reveal, but his brother Kay's husband said yesterday that what I did was mean, and I'm just mad that Kay is a better baker. But Pete said it's ridiculous that the family, including Kay, puts down my baking when they won't even try it all because I'm not Kay. Am I the jerk? Edited to add, we aren't the only two who bring desserts, just the ones who tend to bake more cake than others. Everyone else's desserts get eaten to the same degree except mine. Edit to, if it's not clear, everyone includes Kay. She often tries to teach me techniques that I either already know or were completely wrong. So she wasn't like an innocent that got caught in the line of fire or something like that. All right, folks, what do you think, jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. This seems like just dessert. <laughs> oh, you've been waiting to use that one, haven't you? Actually, I, it just came to me like right when you asked me. And so I'm like, yes, I've got something. <laughs> well, good form. Good form. Well played. I mean, they all have been just like ignoring Opie's desserts. Won't even try them. Not because there's anything like... If there were dietary restrictions mm -hmm. or things like that, that's fine. But literally just, you're not K, so it can't be as good, but keep bringing your desserts. Yeah. So, like, they just that's just really rude. And, like, if you don't want OP bringing desserts because K always brings a cake, then, like, ask her to bring something else. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that OP in this situation was really frustrated that people weren't trying her food. And OP just wanted to get them to try it once so that maybe they would drop the attitude and mm -hmm. actually, you know, respect, you know, Kay's, uh, respect her cooking as opposed to just assuming that blanketly that Kay's was better. Right. Well, this just show, goes to show, like, they're all, they all loved OP's stuff, but then as soon as they said it was OP, it's like, oh, oh, it was, it was okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, so, yeah, no, I think OP, you're fine. They're just jerks. Exactly. Our next story is... Am I the jerk for leaving the restaurant because of what my husband did? I would like to start and say that I'm a 29 year old female and my husband is a 35 year old male and he comes from a well-off family. 
and most of his friends are well off as well. Unlike me and my family, we come from humble working class and don't own a lot of assets like my in-laws do. My husband cares about appearances. At first, he didn't try to control how I look, but did buy me things he said I'd love, but nothing was really my style. After marriage, he sat with me, telling me that I get 100% to choose how I look except when I'm with him or his family and introduced me to brands to choose my new clothes from and I started wearing them whenever I'm with his family and friends, although it limited my choice on what to wear because I'm into more simple things. You know, that's a really odd wedding vow. <laughs> For his friend's birthday that we celebrated at an upscale restaurant, my husband bought me a $300 dress to wear for the occasion, but I didn't like many things about it. I told him I'd just wear my $60 floral maxi dress. He didn't think it was a good idea and said I was violating the rules he gave me after we got married. Right, you don't get to give people rules after <laughs> you get married. Yeah, like, it's like, uh, that's, that's, you, you discuss things ahead of time right. before the if marriage. If it's really right? important, you say it ahead of time, but you don't just be like, oh, we're married now. Here's, here's all these rules I didn't tell you about. Yeah, there's super secret rules that you didn't get to know about until you after marriage. You didn't know you were signing up for this, but here they are. But I said the dress he bought wasn't my style. I I said I either wear my dress or not go. He said, fine, then whatever, but still wasn't happy. We got to the restaurant and no one said anything about my dress except his other friend who said I looked great. After dinner, my husband moved quickly and spilled wine all over my chest and lap. He freaked out and said that he thankfully had a replacement, oh. then pulled out the $300 dress <laughs> he previously wanted me to wear out of the bag. Like you have to know like does he think op is dumb apparently this whole time i couldn't help but think he deliberately spilled the wine on my floral dress to force me into wearing the other dress he handed me the dress and told me to go change i got up but instead of going to the restaurant i made my way to the door he asked me to wait but i kept walking while opening my phone to get an uber to get me home i stood outside and started arguing with him he said he didn't get why I was behaving like this and embarrassing both him and myself like that. I said that he looked down on my dress and tried to trick me into wearing what he wanted by spilling wine on me. He told me to go back inside, but I said I won't move till my Uber arrived. He threw a fit, calling me an embarrassment, and stood there till I left. Okay, so the person who deliberately spills wine on their partner whips out oh here's an oopsie dress and then yeah. starts sulking and having a tantrum <laughs> that, that they're not the one causing the scene the person who gets spilled on is upset that their partner deliberately spilled on them that's that's the real scene because she wore a cheap dress at home he went off saying i could have worn the dress and not made a scene and well, then he could have just not spilled wine either <laughs> yeah and then doubled down and walked out again i said he disrespected my choices and implied i was an embarrassment he said he was just calling a spade a spade and I should quit acting so insensitive and getting offensive, uh, getting offended over nothing. He said I made a joke out of him in front of his friends and one of them, the one who's complimented my dress and the one who constantly tries to video chat with me whenever he sees me online, tried to call me but I didn't respond because he made me feel uncomfortable. Am I the jerk? Did I handle this right? Alright folks, what do you think? Jerk or not the jerk? probably pretty clear how I feel, but I'm going to say OP is not the jerk. Yeah, I mean, I think that this case is clearly OP not being the jerk. I don't know that OP did anything here that would make me feel like OP was, like, in the wrong. Like, yeah, they walked out of the restaurant and left their, you know, husband behind, but their husband was acting like not a very good individual. Right. And he was trying to force OP's hand into wearing this dress. And I think OP handled this in the best possible way, mm -hmm. because if OP had just acquiesced to his, you know, request, then he would just do this every single time that OP had, like, a dress or a garment that he didn't like. So yeah, I think this is really important for OP to get the point across that they're not going to deal with this or put up with this kind of behavior. Absolutely. And OP, this is a definite red flag. Like, I know it maybe it seems like it's small or trivial because you only have to wear these things while you're with his family. But like, he's escalating now. Like, if you mm -hmm. stand up to him, he's going to try and sabotage you to make you wear the clothes he wants. Yeah. He's very, he's more focused on his image than he is on you. Mm -hmm. and, and your happiness. And your happiness. Like, you explicitly told him, I don't like this dress. I don't feel comfortable in it. I want to wear my own clothes. 
And he cared about absolutely none of that. All he could care about was his image. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for doing the absolute minimum chores after my girlfriend's parents implied that I wasn't a man and she agreed with them? No. <laughs> Sorry if some of the sentences feel awkward, I'm not a native speaker, I work from home, and my job is relaxed and doesn't require me to be glued to the screen. My girlfriend works in a stressful customer service job and most of her days are terrible. In the two years that we've been living together, I do practically all the chores around the house and I try to treat her like a queen when she comes back home. However, the one thing I can't do is be a handyman no matter how easy the task is. A few months ago, the bathroom door hinges needed replacing, so I called a friend to help. Last week, during lunch with her parents, I asked her dad about the project that he was working on. He does woodworking as a hobby. He showed me the progress on his phone and suggested that I should help him with the last touches. My girlfriend told him that I can't even replace door hinges, let alone help with that. Her mom said that every man should know how to fix things around the house, and her husband agreed with her. The remainder of the lunch was very awkward. It was like they were my real parents and were disappointed of me in being a huge failure. After we left, I told my girlfriend that I didn't expect the reaction. Instead of taking my side, she said that they were right because it is embarrassing that I need to call a friend to help with something trivial. Our... so trivial, why didn't she take care of it? Yeah. I reminded her that I got nervous and anxious every time I touch a tool. I admitted it was stupid, but it's just the way that I am, and it has been very honest with her since the very start. Still, she didn't change her mind. I told her that since the idea of being a man is twisted, I must share the same view and started working on being their version of a man. I told her that I will stop cooking for her and I'll stop doing the dishes, laundry, and cleaning. The only thing that I would keep doing is taking the trash out and grocery shopping so I could focus my time and effort on becoming a man. All right, folks, what do you think, jerk or not the jerk? Not the jerk. I mean, if someone wants to imply gender norms to you, then, like, it's fine to, you know, lean into that and show them why gender norms are silly. I think the girlfriend and the parents are acting pretty unreasonable at this period of time because they're not taking into account, like, OP skills. Not everyone's going to be skilled in doing tools and house projects and stuff like that. And that's just the way it is. Like, not everyone can play the grand piano. No, everyone, everyone's going to be a grand pianist because if we all were exactly the same and could do the exact same things, then the world would be a very boring orchestra. And if it's really important to OP's girlfriend that someone in the house be able to do these home repairs, there's nothing stopping her from figuring it out. I mean, removing hinges on a door is something that presumably she could do too. It's not like it takes an immense amount of technical expertise. Yeah. And since she knows her boyfriend has anxiety around tools, like there's nothing stopping her from taking up the screwdriver. Yeah, or they could work together and work on fixing the door together. Mm -hmm. It sounds like OP was able to do it with the help of a friend. It doesn't necessarily sound like OP can do it on their own, though. Well, from the way I read it, I assume the friend did the whole thing for them. Yeah. And also, what's wrong with calling in friends to get you to help do things that you might not necessarily be good at? Exactly. That's I, what friends are for. Yeah. And as long as you're not taking advantage of your friends and constantly asking them of, you know, stuff, uh, and you have a fair exchange so they don't feel like they're being put out all the time then i don't think there's anything wrong with this well and that's a really good point you bring up you know a lot of people unfortunately approach things with a very individualist mindset but we work better as a community a lot of times you know so if your friends have skills that you don't have there's nothing wrong with skill exchanges like hey i'll help you with this thing if you help me with this thing or hey i can i'll pay you to you know fix my door or something mm -hmm. like that so you don't have to do everything. Yeah. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I have lied to you one more day in a row. There are no teas. Yeah. There's only water. water. And my magically vanishing straw. Your magically vanishing straw and your magically vanishing green. Yes. You want to tell us a joke? Absolutely. When do one and one make more than two? Um, <laughs> when there are 11? Yes, when they make 11. <laughs>
<laughs> and I was like, you weren't supposed to guess the punchline, Brian. Okay, we'll do another one then. What are arithmetic bugs? <laughs> I don't know what are arithmetic bugs. Mosquitoes, because they add to misery, subtract from pleasure, divide your attention, and multiply quickly. <laughs> well, I suppose they are. <laughs> all of those things. <laughs> All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Happy Friday, Junior. Happy Friday, Junior. Thanks so much, for Amber, for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Happy Pride Month again. Happy Pride Month. And uh, I hope you're all having a great week. I hope you're all having a great day. And uh, I guess we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.